Hello, so in this video we're going to look at how you can use Python with no GUI and you can use the text user interface known as a TUI. We're going to be looking at C types in Windows, we're going to be looking at how you can use terminal tables and color class in Windows or Linux and I'm also going to just discuss how you can use simple term menu if you want a menu in Linux. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first example we're going to look at is using C types which is a foreign library function for Python. C types is a foreign library function for Python. It provides C compatible data types and allows calling functions in DLLs or shared libraries. It can be used to wrap these libraries in pure Python. What it actually means is you can use a Windows DLL via Python. So that allows you to use message boxes, etc. And here is the example they've provided. C types exports a DLL or CD. LL and on Windows, WinDLL and OLEDLL objects for loading dynamic link libraries. That's the syntax. And what we're going to do is we're going to say from C types import C underscore int, win func type, and WinDLL. What we do is we, we specify the prototype. Yeah. And there's some parameter flags, window handle, text, caption, flags. Again, we use windll.user32. And if we run this, we should get, uh, it's appeared on my other screen, apologies for that. So there you see, that's the first bit, which is number one. Hi. Next, if I click OK on that, it disappears. And then I should get uh, on the other screen again, spam, spam, spam. And third one should be foobar. Yeah, and it's foobar with flag set to two. So that's actually given me a bot retry and ignore. So the, the code two gives me these. That's how to use C types to use. This obviously applies to Windows only because it's using a Windows DLL. So next, let's look, let's look at actually a smaller example before we move on to cross platform. So what you've just seen was the Python documentation for Python 3.96. Here is a slimmed down version, import C types, message box equals C types dot win DLL dot user 32 dot message box w and we'll say message box w and none message for user window title here so that's where we would have put let's just run this and then i'll change that so we'll see that and there we go message for user quite small and if i change that let's change that to i don't know if that's going to work or not but let's try it Let's change that to, I don't know if it's numeric or not. Let's just give it a try. And that has done nothing. Try one. And that's failing dismally. So let's set that back to none. Okay, none is not I don't know how to convert parameter one. Okay, so let's just set that back to none. And it's case sensitive. That would explain it. There we go, message for user. So we're back to where we were. Right, that's that example. So next, let's look at example number three. And all I've done here is use some conditional logic. We're still using none. And I've specified the title. And what is this? This is taken from an example. And instead of naught, we've got or type 0x40. Let's run that. And we get this. See this here? 
maybe subscribed. I'm just going to change that. And what is OX40? Let's just check what OX40 is. Okay, that's hex 464. So I'd imagine that is actually six, meaning a 64 bit. I've just changed that four back to a two. And I think if we run that, we might get the same as we had on the previous example. And let's have a look. Yeah, it is. So we've got, have you subscribed, abort, retry, ignore. So by changing that number, you get a different type of message box. And if you search somewhere, I'm sure you can get those different message numbers. And yeah, if you search on Microsoft documentation, two gives bought, retry and ignore. Six gives cancel, try again, continue. So if we wanted to change it to help, we would do four. I think, um, let's try four for yes, no, then. I think that's what we had, wasn't it? Yeah, so just check the Windows documentation and you can modify your dialog box. So that's using Windows. So we've seen the basic Python documentation example. We've seen a shortened abbreviated version where we can uh, edit the title. Just a nice quick three liner. We've seen where we can modify, how to modify the message box and then put in some conditional logic. And fourth, I just want to show this, which is terminal tables and color class, which runs on Linux and Windows, I believe. So this is in Windows. And there we go. So although not strictly speaking an interactive GUI or TUI, it is actually a text user interface because we're actually seeing data being displayed in columns and rows and we're seeing some coloring. So what we've done here is we've imported terminal table from terminal tables import ASCII table from color class import color. We've created a list of lists and then we specify in uh, curly braces auto green, auto green, auto red. So that's that there, auto red, row two, that's text. So the text we put in here. And obviously you could put in a variable there to make it uh, dynamic or dynamically modified by a variable. And then table equals ASCII table. And so that object is then printed using table.table. .table. If you look at the documentation, I believe it was written a while ago. So it was actually done for Python 2. So if you get an error, you just need to come in and modify the print statement at the end and then it will work for you. There's a good example there and that's got lots and lots of different variations on this basic example, which I've just showed here. So with that being said, let's just uh, run this on a Linux box as well. So I'm just going to go over to my Raspberry Pi and run the same code. OK, so I'm going to do this live. So bear with me, Vim, and we will call this dem1.py. And there we go. I've already copied it to the clipboard. So if I do control shift and V and Vim, nothing happens because it's on an SSH session. So instead, what I'll quickly do is SCP that across from my Windows machine to my Pi. If you just want to see how I do that, I've got WinSCP open and I've got the folder open on the left hand side that contains CT4, which was what we were just looking at. And then I'm just going to drag that across onto home slash pi. And that's completed. So we can close that. Exit. Make this full screen. And then if we run Python, I don't know if it's up an alias, so I'm going to use Python 3 and 4, ct4.py. And I've not installed terminal tables on this Pi, so pip install terminal tables. And I expect it will also complain about, um, what was it, color? Let this run first. And I think it's going to then complain about color, color class. Let's 
install that as well. This is on a Pi E 4B. There we go. So if we just clear this again, and if we run, there we go. So using Raspberry Pi, we've got a similar output to what we had on Windows. And if we just open the code again, ct4.py, there you see all of the, the code. And the great thing about this is you can make it dynamic. So you could also put conditional logic in. So if you look at the example on example2.py in uh, Rob Pol 186 terminal tables blobmaster GitHub page, you'll see that you can make various different uh, grids, tables, etc., etc., and so on. So hopefully this has been interesting. And if you're making a GUI or a TUI, <laughs> then consider not using Tkinter or not using GTK or any other form of GUI. If it's just a simple program, it may actually be better and quicker to do something like this. So we've looked at using C types in Python to access Windows DLLs, and we've looked at using terminal tables and color class, which works in both Python, which works in Python on Windows and Linux. So hopefully this has been interesting. And um, yeah, in the meantime, uh, I think don't for get to as L goes. There we go. I'll leave you with that. In the meantime, have a nice day. <laughs>